Hi everybody, on behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, for most of you, because I know that a lot of people watch the show, you know, really consistently. We've done the show for 10 years, 11 years now. We've done, this is, you know, I guess the 185th show. And show in and show out, year in and year out, the intention basically stays the same. The intention is dedicated to the oneness. The intention is, I would say, the joyous recognition of, of who we really are, of how we come to this experience as human beings, and what is the real root of this experience as human beings, and how we can come together as brothers and sisters on this planet, as caretakers of this glorious planet, as as brothers and sisters of the dolphins and whales, and and just be in this Garden of Eden, because obviously there's so much beauty here. There's so much beauty here. Each of us has so much beauty within us, somewhere. Sometimes it's more buried than others. But we know, somewhere in our hearts, each of us, every one of us knows that we can know something about that love, something about that truth, something about that oneness. And when we know that, our lives will be different. Our lives are different. And throughout history, that's been the call, the clarion call of all the teachers, the masters, the mistresses, the, you know, the people who had that experience, the people who knew, who knew love, who knew truth, who knew oneness. They said, you can have the experience I, I have. Let that love shine. Be here now. Be in that experience of love. And as you know, people who've watched the show before know, I mean, we have people coming in from all over the world, one after the other after the other, whose dedication, whose passion, whose recognition in one form or another just echoes and, and just resounds that love, that truth. And again, we have somebody whose gifts are just enormous. Uh, Vivian Nantel, she's an artist, she's a poet, she's a writer, she's a humanitarian, she's an environmental activist, she's an animal activist. I mean, this is one busy woman letting that love shine, standing up for those animals, those individuals, those trees, those plants, those waters, that in a way, the way it's disharmonized on this earth, they can't stand up for themselves. And her art is just an amazing manifestation, an amazing outgrowth, just a, a cry from the heart. And we've talked a little bit before, we really haven't gotten into it much. We started this incredible international Bridging Heaven and Earth art project, and we contacted you know artists from all over the world. And Vivian, when we contacted her, just said, count me in. I mean, this is something I want to do, to enliven that vibration of love, to collaborate with all these other artists all over the world, to create a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. And the pieces are starting to come in and they're just unbelievable, just, just unbelievable expressions of love in so many different ways that we can express that love. And later on in the show, when Vivian comes on, you'll see her painting. Uh, the Bridging Heaven and Earth Blossom, it's just unbelievable. So, I mean, this is a true Renaissance woman who flew in just to do this show tonight. I mean, her paintings are exhibited all over the world, and, you know, it's an honor to be able to sit with her and talk about passion and love and creativity. And honestly, if you sit for this next hour or so, you too will be honored to be part of that. And then we have two incredible videos uh, this wonderful woman put this together, Mary Robinson Reynolds, this You Are the Light video. And then we have a, a video from the uh, people of the Ethical Treatment of Animals, PETA, about vegetarianism and, and different things like that. And, you know, it's a show that can really open the heart. It's a show that can let us into that oneness. So, as we normally do, please join me in a meditation to get us settled in. And then we'll have the video, and then we'll have of Vivi with us on the set, and it's really an opportunity to just go deeper into that experience. So please join me in a short meditation.
Thank you. So we're going to start tonight's show with a video. It's You Are the Light. Uh, it's an amazing internet story. I, I was, you know, we get internet messages from all over the world about people doing incredible things. And in one weekend, I must have gotten 25 messages on the internet saying there's this wonderful video that's circulating on the internet. It's called You Are the Light. It was created by Mary uh, Robinson Reynolds. It was produced by her husband, Craig Reynolds. Uh, the creator of the Moments of Peace music on it is uh, Charles Seninga. And everyone said, you've got to see this video. So when I saw it, I said, you know, let me call Mary and, and Craig and see if we can get a copy. And they were just so graciously sent it to us. And here it is. You are the light. So enjoy. Hi, everybody. Well, we're back with Vivi, so welcome. It's great to have you. Yes. Namaste. It's my honor to be here today. Yeah, it's beautiful. Very so, happy. And the painting you're seeing is the 
Bridging Heaven Earth Blossom. I told you a little about the Bridging Heaven Earth Art Project. This is one of the first paintings that came in, so you can imagine how pleased we are. So why don't you talk about like creativity and art and love and passion and if there's a bigger topic, let me see if I can find one. Wow, creativity. I don't know. I think we all are very creative. We all are talented, Alan. Is that we don't know it because we're divine and we forget that we are, you know, spiritual being, uh, uh, you know, having a human experience. But um, I think for me, creating is, um, is I just sit down and go within my ancient cave and, and I just let this energy, this love coming through me, and um, I just become, I would say a vehicle, but um, we are divine, so in a way we're not a vehicle, we are, um, it's just a manifestation of the divine that comes through us, and I think when we make that space to allow this beautiful energy to come to us, I mean, we could tap in the cosmic, and I mean, this, it's amazing what we can do. It's just that we need to make this quiet time. And I think for me, it's when I sit down in meditation and um, every breath becomes a prayer and every moment is an eternity. And I see images and it just comes to me. And um, it's interesting because sometimes I'm in front of a canvas and I, 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 I see images, and I would say when I'm in my studio, it's um, it's become it has become a spiritual practice for me. It's a ritual. It's actually I would say it's a devotion. It's a path of of love and devotion. I bring the bhakti yoga aspect into my work because I really do it out of uh, of love and and offering to the divine, and so. The ego is gone when I work. Whatever that comes, I express that in that manifestation on the canvas. But I mean, you started having those experiences young, right? I mean, you were a little girl when you started having these experiences of like that creativity and wanting to manifest. Yeah. Well, I was quite a philosopher when I was a little girl and it frightened my parents because I was so unusual. Um, I would sit down and, and I don't know, I don't think all children do that, but I, I would sit down and, and ask those big questions, you know, if very early on, not even seven years old, maybe even five years old, I would wonder, I would start with myself. Why am I here? What am I doing here? And what is this? Who am I? And it would expand to trying to understand the whole cosmic universe and trying to understand in my little mind what is it behind the the walls of, of, of the sky in my child's mind. And then I would try to f figure this out and then I would go back and go back within myself. And um, and so um, that's basically it. And then I started drawing. Uh, I would emerge myself into drawing. And I think most people don't realize art, any kind of uh, form of art, when it is offered to the divine, it really becomes a meditation because you you lose yourself in it. You become one with it. You. I would say in my studio, sometimes I go in total ecstasy and blissful. I cry. If anyone would see me outdoor, like. Papa, how do you call those photographer? You know, looking paparazzi. paparazzi. Thank you. And they would take pictures. I mean, they would think I'm totally crazy because I go with my hands up and I cry and I I go in blissful state. I roll over on the floor. I play with my our doggies and 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 sometimes I just close my eyes and I feel presence with me as I work. And I feel like my work is has intense shakti, a lot of energy in it. And people have noticed it um, when this, I've seen people crying seeing my artwork and also I had seen people hearing, I should say, hearing saying that it has a healing effect on them. It touched on a very deep core within their soul. Because I think what's happening, Alan, with this kind of work that comes through me, um, it touched not only a deep core of the soul, but it brings back this it awakened a little the recognition. bit. Recognition. Yeah, that's right. The recognition, first of all, because we forget that how separated we are from the divine. We become, we come into this physical realm and we experience Maya, the illusion of this reality. And um, 
we forget totally who we are and that's where we are we're totally divine being that we have lost this connection we have been annihilated and we get so caught up into the small mind the ego and this all illusion of this life all the separation the seeming separation yeah exactly and in reality the true reality we don't see it with our true eyes you know those physical eyes i i believe again this is my personal experience but i'm sure a lot of people will understand and would agree with that the soul would recognize something that is divine because it's speaking a very very profound level it's 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 a language that we cannot put into words the truth when we when the soul experiences the truth and when it touches it we're speechless and it touch our emotion and emotions are the most powerful forces of the universe and one of them is love and going back to what i was saying people have said to me your work has touched me very deeply and they become conscious and there's something that, that has been triggered within themselves and what it is is it rekindles that that connection with the divine that has been lost finding like making that quiet coming time home right? yes Feeling thank like you coming yes coming back home even if it's only for a second and it, it feels adds, so good oh, it's it's so very so beautiful yeah. and that's why for me creating is is so blissful because uh, I lose myself in my work when I'm there. It's mm -hmm. like um, I become one. But with you the also work. write poems and you yes. write articles. Actually, you wrote a poem about this that yes. we'll have on the website and all yes. that. So, why don't you want to yeah. read that? Yeah, yeah I would love to. Right. And actually, I would say for my writing and my poetry is the same too. Right. I, I lose myself in it, and uh, except for the English part, sometimes it's a little difficult. You yeah, know, what else loses you there? <laughs> Everybody loses me. My editor loses me too, very much so. No, no. Sure, I'm still great. working on that language. I tell you, it's it's oh, like. Oh, you sound so good. No, no, I'm you still do. learning, and it's an internal learning process here on this earth. But I will read it to you, okay, thank and you. Uh, it's a very short. Um, it's entitled, of course, "Bridging Heaven and Earth Blossom." I crawl within my ancient cave, surrendering to the longing of your multiple faces. My one heart is letting go of the last tear. Where are you, divine one? So, why are you crying? Drowning in the sea of earthly misery? Wake up! You are the sun, you are the moon, the virgin flower with wings spreading light, blossoming in the night. Sacred heaven of my heart feeds you as one. Oh, my beloved sunflower. Oh, it's beautiful. So did you, you did that after you, you did the painting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. After, after yeah. you had it yeah. done and finished. Yeah. And I have to say that I, I don't work when spirit doesn't want to work. I let spirit guide me, whatever is spirit, I don't know, you know, who am I to say what it is, I don't know, but this wonderful energy that comes to me, um, it just come naturally and I feel a pull to go into my studio to create and that's when I express the same thing for poetry the same thing with writing I think it's it takes something to grab my soul and and because I am so open my heart is open actually going back to a heart opening that's what I wanted to say that's uh, what that's what I've been told by people it could open the heart chakra of course, not everyone would use the word chakra because, mm. but it opened up that 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 beautiful art that we have that we tend to keep closed, shut be, down. We shut down because of the world we live in. We are so afraid to to be hurt and be vulnerable, and um, so that's the way I create. That's that's I just let the divine inspire me. And, but as time goes on, you're more in tune with that. So I mean. In other words, you would say that you know, as you surrender more to that, you're more in line with that, and the paintings are almost a pure manifestation of that because oh, you're less there. Absolutely. In a way. Oh, you you said exactly what I was about to say. It's a total surrendering. Thank you. It's a total surrendering. No problem. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a total surrendering because it's the only way you could create powerful work or a work 
any kind of, of art that touches the soul. If we start going into theory thinking. and thinking yeah, and... It starts to be flat and Yeah, flat. and especially in the art world, it's everything is about a theory and be classified in the a, 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 a category of for art history and I try to me it's like I actually sometimes prefer not to be put into a category because I feel like at the moment we do that when anything we do in life especially when it comes to uh, art is that we are putting ourselves in a cage and we're limiting ourselves. yeah we're limiting ourselves and we're bigger than that anything we could uh, define yeah uh, exactly so and it you know, I'm a, I let the divine inspire me, and, and the manifestation come to me, and, and now you should see my new work. This is going I to be interesting. It's evolving, it's changing, right. and I let, I let it express and manifest. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, like so often when we talk about doing the show, I mean, it just, it has like a mind of its own. Yeah. You know, I have and to... it's, it's, you know, it, the guests who are supposed yeah. to come on, come on, yeah. and those who aren't, yeah. even if we think they should, don't. It doesn't yeah. work that way, and it's just, yeah. you know, it's an expression that way. I was going to share a little story with you because I think it would be interesting for people to hear and the viewer, because when I graduated, I, when I studied art, um, my work was very different, and I had an incredible metamorphosis and a spiritual ex um, awakening, so to speak, and um, it was, in January of 2001, and it was related with the plane crash, Alaska Airlines, flight 261. And my husband and I, we were traveling, we went to Puerto Vallarta, and we were booked on flight 259. And um, Michael had a premonition about, not, not a premonition, excuse me, he, he wanted to change the, um, the flight. I had the premonition, because I had the feeling we were going to the airport, and we changed the flight. There were um, a difference of uh, one hour in the flight, and I felt the energy coming through me. So when we got into the plane, I sat down and started meditating and praying and visioning a light around the plane. And it's just a long story, but I'll make it very short. When we arrived at San Francisco Airport and landed, we were told that the plane was lost, and we didn't understand right away what it meant. But when we went through the costume and found out, the plane had crashed and everyone had perished and died. The, the plane you were supposed to be on. Yes, exactly. Both of us, we were booked wow. on that. And I had felt the energy, and I realized what I was feeling was actually the energy of those souls that passed away, and it was very, very powerful experience. And when I came back, I had an incredible spiritual awakening in my work totally changed. It was all this coming out and I was so surprised. It was it was amazing. I so went it surprised you that all of a sudden yeah. what was you were painting before was completely different than what you were painting yeah. now, after that experience. Yeah, because I felt like my heart, my soul had sink into the bottom of the ocean with the soul, those people that died, even though we all move on and it was interesting how it impacted me, and how I realized how ephemeral is this world that we live in, and it made me truly in contact with my true essence, with the source, with the, our Creator, and 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 this is where I had an incredible, powerful spiritual awakening. I went through, of course, I pray and mourn for months. It was interesting. It was amazing the experience I had uh, to see. I was actually for almost a month and a half without working, and when I went back in my studio, this is the kind of work started coming up. In, and in nothing studio. like this, you had done anything No, like this nothing, 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 nothing. Wow. If you would have seen, and what's interesting is like if you see, if you look, take the time to look at the body of my work, it, it has, a, it's very philosophical. And it's, there's a lot of depth in it. I mean, especially um, in my earliest work on the Veda, on the Upanishad, the Vedas. I did not know anything about the ancient tradition of uh, yoga, which is a beautiful, rich tradition, and it was all coming up in my work. Wow. Yeah. So it was quite a surprise, but I did not resist it. I pulled my mouth, my mind, and my ego, and I just was in the moment. And that's when I started having some very powerful spiritual experiences as I was working. Wow. So when and and you described it that when you're painting and that surrender happens, I mean, there's an experience of 
being in the moment, being in oneness, being in, in an infinite quality. And it, in a human body, it really feels like love and bliss, right? Oh, bliss is love, and oneness is love. And we need to all reconnect to that source. Um, whatever. And then there's no separation, and then everyone's our brother and sister. I mean, you know, we talk about that you know, on the show I said at the opening, you know, dedicated to the oneness, you know, that kind of you know, experience. And we all are interconnected, and right. when we talk further about uh, animal uh, cruelty and all that, you'll see in the environment how we are all interconnected and the oneness. Because there's no difference between you and I and, and the world and everybody. We all are so interconnected. And when we hurt someone, the you know, an animal or uh, anything. So we, were, we are really hurting ourselves. And when we let someone go, you know, let down, we really are letting ours down. And in love, that's, there's nothing else that's more powerful than anything else is love. Love is the most powerful emotion. And we could change the world with love. And, but only if we go back and reconnect it. and yeah. and let go of that separation and that alienation from home and come back home we don't have to wait until we pass away it could be done right in, in now yeah. and it i think it comes from the longing of the divine you know loving and and that longing of the divine is so very beautiful because and I, that's another thing that happened to me also, I would say, I, I met my spiritual teacher, you know, they say when the student is ready, the master come, and this was so unexpected, and so, it came so beautiful, and and he's, I don't know, maybe you heard of him, his holiness Sri Sri Ravi Shankar mm -hmm. from the Art of Living Foundation. Mm -hmm. By the way, next year, this uh, this next year, I believe, it's our 25th uh, anniversary with the Art of Living. But I was going to say about, um, the, the beautiful teaching that I see, which is universal, is that um, Sri Sri talks a lot about the longing of the divine. And what I see in humanity in the world with all the wars and all the animal cruelty and the disaccord and the hatred and the violence, there's so much violence in the world. What's lacking is that people need to start looking within and letting that longing come through. That's what's like. Because when we start having that longing, that longing for the divine, you start opening up your heart and letting that love come yeah, through. Yeah, the need opens you. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. most people, their heart is closed. It's the, but we live in this world in, on earth because there's so much violence, there's duality, the duality is so strong and we, we get caught up in it so easily and we are forgetting that we need to refocus and center ourselves and, and let go of the ego, let go of the, the small mind and let start searching for the divine that's the first thing and i think a wonderful practice if for anyone who is would like to is not yet in touch with their soul it's very easy just close the mind you close the eyes put your hands on your heart that's the best way to start to grow spiritual we're all our spiritual being it's not that we're not is to i would say to evolve and to start to go on a spiritual path. If we have lost a connection, put the hands on the heart and start breathing deeply. And just, it's very simple, close the eyes and focus on the heart. And that's it, just quietly, peacefully and start feeling. It's a very simple practice and it's a wonderful way to start. And there's a lot of different way, of course, but I'm just saying right now to share with the that's viewers, beautiful. it's very you simple. Wanna talk a little bit about, we're going to show that second video, the PETA video about, yes. you know, chew on this, the vegetarian. So why don't you introduce it and then we'll show it. Absolutely. Um, you want me to talk about the PETA video? Uh, or, we'll, we'll yeah. actually, why don't we show it and then we'll talk about it after. That, that would be uh, wonderful. Okay, so it's called that, Chew on This. Yeah. It's uh, by the uh, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, uh, whenever you're ready with it. Thanks. Reasons, Reasons to become a vegetarian. Vegetarian. No 
number one because heart disease begins in childhood. Number two. Because a vegetarian diet reverses heart disease. Number three. Because eating meat and dairy makes you fat. Number four. Because you shouldn't have to lie to your kids about the food that you eat. Number five. Because in every package of chicken, every package of chicken, there's a little poop. Poop. <laughs> Number six. Because meat is filthy and bloody. Number seven. Because no living creature wants to see her family slaughtered. You hear that? Number 10. Because mad cow disease is in the U.S. Number 11. Because it's violence you can stop. We can stop. Number 12. Because no one should have to make a living by killing. Number 13. Because it takes a small person to eat a defenseless animal. And an even smaller person to eat it. Number 15, because the grain used to feed them could feed them. You need more? Because they're defenseless. Because when animals feel pain, they scream too. Because they don't want to die. Because they feel fear. Because no matter how you slice it, it's still flesh. Because commerce is no excuse for murder. Because everyone wants to be free. Because eating fish doesn't make you a vegetarian. Because might doesn't make right. Hi, we're back on the set with Vivi. So, how long have you been a vegetarian? Oh wow, <laughs> almost all my life. But um, I have I have had some meat at one point. I would say at home, my parents, my mom, because it's a French, um, you know, family, she would serve traditional, um, you know, meat, and I would always leave the meat there and go and steal the vegetable. But I had some chicken there. I mean, and so there. just instinctively, mm -hmm. something in you. I mean, from an early age, felt disconnected from eating meat? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I always felt like animal, I adore animal. I mean, the divine is everywhere, permeate this universe. I mean, worshiping animals, worshiping the environment is worshiping God. And I think naturally I knew that. So for me, it was never something I wanted to do to eat animals because people this is a matter of race and consciousness right most people even on a spiritual part i would say that i have noticed are not vegetarian and i do not understand well actually i take it back i do understand is that still they haven't reached that consciousness that where we reach a level where that circle of compassion and kindness and love needs to be extended to every sentient being and and to me it was almost natural <laughs> but um, I, 
I, I, I will be sincere. Yes, indeed, I have had chicken. I had seafood at one point, but I very quickly I stopped eating it at a very young age. It, it, it didn't feel natural for me. Well, there's so much cruelty with animals, and people are not aware of it. And that's what I was saying earlier. It goes back to raising people's consciousness and becoming aware. Because, Alain, I will say with all my heart, if people knew what's happening in, in the world, in, in farm factory, and the slaughterhouses, they would become vegetarian and vegan very, very quickly. People have no idea what's happening, and it's, it's, it's atrocious cruelty. You know, most people think of farm animals, of that little farm, you know, the little picture you see in, in books when you grow up. It used to be that way 15 years ago, but it's not like that today. It's unfortunately the world we live in, as we, have, we are experiencing, there's tremendous violence, and, and we see it in those institutions, all those industries. We are human beings who are so driven by greed and selfishness motif that we're forgetting that we are hurting ourselves and we're hurting the, you know, everything. We're destroying the planet. That's basically what we're doing. People don't know we are destroying the planet. As we speak right now, we have thousands of species of animals who died every year, thousands of thousands. Rainforests are being destroyed. Um, I mean, I'm sure some of you have heard the um, uh, entire field of football field every hour has been destroyed. Not only we're depleting um, the natural resources, but we're depleting all those animals. The wildlife are dying. But I want to go back to the farm factory and the slaughtering houses because I like to depict a picture of what's going on there. And because the general public is not aware of that. And of course, all the industry will hide it because it's, it's, it's we're consumer, and um, you know there's a lot of money to be made. Actually, this industry of, of, um, of the, the farm industry, it's a 120 billion dollars uh, industry. And if we look at what's happening right now in the farm factory, the animals are raised as they would take care better of a chair than uh, a pig or or ants, for example, the laying ants, they live in ants, and yeah. ants, thank you, H-E-N. Uh, if they said ants, even, even <laughs> animal activists aren't protecting the ants yet. <laughs> Not the ants, H-E-N. Oh my god, we got to protect <laughs> Uh oh, no, the, God, the hens. Uh, yeah, the, the hens. Whole, Thank uh, you. It's my, it's my accent. No, I know. Uh, I told you, I still I mean, I've this language. I listened to you a lot, you said uh, hens. Yeah. I told you, hens. No, oh, my God, hens. the hens. So they are in, in, um, in battering cages, and there are about, like, dozens of them, and they cut their beak with a hot blade. And they can't, they don't even see the daylight. They also uh, put them into a stage that is called malting, where they starve them for like, uh, it varies between five to two, uh, 10, 15 days. So that way they will produce eggs even more. And they stack on top of each other in big warehouse. There are like thousands and thousands of them. And it's tremendous. And it doesn't seem like it makes you want to eat an omelet, does it? <laughs> No, oh, yeah, and right. they feed them hormones and, and actually, hormones? yeah, oh. hormones and uh, to make them grow much faster. I, I mean, right now, they slaughter those poor little chickens at two months old. They have grown so big that their heart, their whole entire body cannot even support themselves. Some of them even die in the cage even before they get a chance to go to the slaughterhouses, but maybe it's better if they don't go anyway. And for instance, the, the calf, as soon as a baby calf is born, they take it away from the mother and they put them into little tiny crates where they cannot even move and they tie it up by the neck and they feed them some kind of milk that is made with blood. The real milk of the cow goes to who? To the human beings. That's what we are drinking. And it's full of pesticides, it's full of, 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 um, of antibiotic and hormone and 
and and I could go on and on. And the piglet, the way they live, is, is is atrocious. And I was going to say, the fume when you walk into those farm is tremendous. I mean, they, it would blind you. It blinds some of the animals, and their lifespan is very short. And um, all of them grow much faster than what they're supposed to, twice and even three times faster. And um, it's it's very scary what's going on. And the worst part is when they go to the slaughtering houses. And the trip they go there, um, it's horrendous cruelty. They don't have water. A lot of them die in, in cages. Uh, like, for instance, the cow, um, there's over 195,000 drowned, they call it draw, drowners. There are cows who actually cannot even walk. They have broken bones, and they pull them out of the, 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 the trucks and, and uh, kick them, and, and they, they die there. They, they pull them with chain because they can get up. They, they don't have any force, the energy to go, and the, the farm factory is it's an invention of the era we live in, and it's not sustainable. What's happening right now, it's affecting the entire um, uh, planet Earth. It's affecting our environment because 1% um, of the water that we use uh, here in America is being used to raise those animals. And it's you, now this is a perfect example to see how, how we all interconnected and now it's affecting the entire planet because with the farm factory and the meat industry, the, the slaughtering houses. Because all the grain that has been given to those animals to grow, and there's over 10 billions of animals that are being grown here alone, land animal here in this country to go to the slaughterhouse to feed people. And uh, over 15 billion of fishes, um, uh, fish, excuse me, that has been uh, fed to people. And it's, it's incredible how all this, this meat is the animal. How they are they are cruelly abused in the slaughtering houses. They they dismember consciously, and and there is a lot of study on that. And I would say, don't take my word for it, because I would say. I'm sharing some information with you. There's a lot of research that could be done on the internet, and I'll mention a few of those websites that you could read. But I want to go back to the environment because it's important how we're depleting the, the resources. I was going to say also that um, how it's affecting the pollution because all those pesticides, the antibiotic, and all of those natural products they use, it goes into the water, into the topsoil, all over. It goes into our forests, it goes into everywhere, and it's really affecting. Um, and like I was saying, world hunger, I mean, look at Ethiopia and Somalia uh, in the 90s and the 80s. They were shipping grains to America and Europe to feed the first world in order to satisfy our desire for, for meat while those people were starving. And the, if we could change that, I mean, think of all those billions of animals I just mentioned, uh, we would, we would um, actually cut down on a lot of the cruelty. I have seen the undercover video of a lot of the slaughtering houses, and it's, it touched you very deeply, you know? You don't have to be spiritual to see how it's insane it is. And there is, there is a, actually a law out, it's called the Human Slaughtering Act, but apparently it's not reinforced and there is a lot of violation, a lot, tremendous amount of violation. And um, so those are the area where I could see how we are interconnected and we don't see it, that how this industry among all civil industry, how we're not paying attention, how we're destroying the planet. Right now, as it is, 90% of the ocean is in a state of collapse. This is serious. I mean, most people are not aware of that. And global warming is now, it's not a warming anymore, it's happening right now as it is. And it's all interconnected. For instance, all the oil we use over, I believe, I'm not sure about that, but I think over 50% of the oil that comes is being used for the, 
the consumption of creating this food industry. And in reality, if we we're all going to become vegan or, or vegetarian, just out of compassion to start with. Oh, most important, I wanted to say, because there's so much to talk about the subject and I, I'm bombarded with thoughts right now here, is also for our own health. I mean, according to the American uh, Dietetic Association and American Medical Association, they have uh, said, both of those associations, that vegetarian and veganism are a lot more healthier. Uh, they have lower blood pressure, lower cancer, lower prostate cancer, lower, I mean, I could name it. I mean, again, I could give you a lot of statistics and I'll give you some website you could look, but it's true, vegetarian are healthier. But I want to go back to the aspect, the spiritual aspect, because I think that's what it goes back to. It's really realizing that compassion, if we are going to grow spiritually, Alan, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, compassion is in love. It's to be extended to all Satan beings. We need to bring back those human values. I believe the world has lost those values. Well, not entirely, but it's lacking. We need to revive that reverence, that worshiping, that compassion, and that love, and that respect. Because the divine is in every particle of this universe. And the animals are the greatest teacher. They are the spiritual teacher. They teach us to open up our heart. They teach us to love. Because love, it's not only, you know, and I feel like, how can we love and extend compassion to our neighbors and stop the wars if we cannot even do it with animals? And if we cannot see the divine in the animals, in every, in a flower, in a beautiful, uh, even a pig, because they're highly intelligent, that's the other thing that people don't realize. Animal, uh, we are animal, by the way. The un-animal, uh, I would say, humans, they are very highly intelligent. People don't realize that. They have feelings, they have personality. And my most powerful spiritual experience I have had has been with animals of oneness. When you look at them in, in, in their eye, only one experience, and they touch your soul, I have lost myself in them. I became one and I felt my heart opening up and that blossom coming, that um, blossoming, but that, that bliss, that joy. And it's very powerful. And when you hear the cry of the animal and you feel it, it touches your soul very deeply. How can you sit down and eat them? This is, this is what we talk about, raising consciousness. This is the next level of spirituality. How, if we talk about oneness, how can we not see it in the animal? They're divine. How can we go and eat them? They have their own rights. They are as equal as we are. We are the one that we are an inferior species when we are committed act of cruelty upon them. And, and I believe is that most people don't realize that because if they knew what's happening, it's not only, I have to say, the animal cruelty is not only in, in, in farm factory and slaughtering houses, it's everywhere. Look at cats and dogs. There's an amazing overpopulation of cats and dogs. There's so many also are being, um, you know, um, have received some cruelty from youngster on the street. and. If you look at uh, uh, farms of forest, the way they raise them, they, electro they electrocute them annually, they suffocate them, they poison them. They, it's not only the way they, they're, they're, they're being killed, but it's the way they're raised. Um, the same thing, leather, the byproduct of animal, leather, it's causing serious damage to the environment as well. Um, and those cows, again, are cruelly slaughtered and tortured. And if you look at um, can hunting, exotic pets, have you heard about can hunting? Where the... You know, it's one of those words, I'm not sure what you're saying. So. They act, 
Can hunting, it's a new thing right now, is that... Uh, it sounds like you hunt cans, but it well, can't be Well, it sounds like that mean. because they are in, they're in a very small area where they use exotic animals, they are oh, yeah, uh, imported, that. and they don't yeah, give them a the chance. Them. You just shoot them, and now there's a new thing also about um, computer, uh, where you could do it on the internet. And somebody else shoots yeah. them for you? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Just what a with, beautiful thing. It's it's amazing. <laughs> and then the other thing is also uh, animal experimentation. I mean, the experiment on cats and dogs. Well, I want to go back also. If we were not going to eat our cat, would you eat your cat or your dog? Well, I, I buried my cat about three years ago, so that would be quite a meal. But uh, <laughs> you know. You know, I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. But you know, I guess it depends how hungry I was. Well, when you so, see, <laughs> with all due respect, for the, you know, well, there's but plenty, probably not. But not there's plenty of beautiful abundance here in this planet. No, I probably wouldn't. But you know, you never could tell. All things. Well, maybe that's the another area we need to look into growing spiritually. Well, there's probably a lot of areas we can look into. But. But I could go on and on talking about animal cruelty because there is so much, it's so rampant in the world. I mean, in the laboratory. Well, I mean, you know that there's cruelty, you know, human to human, human to fish, human to, you know, family. I mean, we just, we're, we're, we feel separate. So once we feel separate, all hell breaks loose. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's like, you know, the real question is how do we reconnect, which, you know, you talked about earlier. But you could reconnect, we could reconnect with animals. Again, it's just, of course, we need to reconnect with our soul. But at the moment, we let the heart open up a little bit. We have this reverence, and we see God in you know, the animal. Just, we're just so separated out. I mean, people can have cats and dogs and love their cats and dogs, and then, you know, eat a salmon or... You know, eat a chicken or... But that's, that's why I was saying that's the next level right. of compassion, mm -hmm. to expand that awareness, that love to all sentient beings. Um, but yeah, I mean, you would treat a tree with respect. In a, you know, I mean, not that you would never cut one down, maybe. I mean, you know, probably we would use wood. I mean, it would just be different. I mean, I don't know if we'd never cut a you know, tree down. I mean, you wouldn't say we would never cut a tree down, right? Well... It's better not, unless we have to. But well, I mean, yeah, but there, you know, I mean, probably there's some wood in your house, right? I mean, just, you know, it's the nature of, like, where we are at this point, you know? So, I mean, I think we would do it a lot differently. I mean, you know, we would have reverence and respect, so if we cut something down or ate it, we would respect what they're doing for us. And but that's the new, that's what I'm trying to bring up. If this is the new level of consciousness that we are seeing is happening yeah, no, it's right now absolutely. that to embrace everything as divine because God permeate every particle of this universe and I want to go back to the oneness I mean if okay. we are one because we, we need to remember we talk okay. about oneness Let's go back to the one. <laughs> okay if this is that indeed we are one when you look at an animal you're looking at yourself. How can you eat yourself? I don't even want to go there. So you see? So you see, this is very deep. And it's just a matter to start being a, a conscious and aware of that. And, and when you start looking around and look at those beautiful animals and, and having that connection, it's very powerful. And that's why I say animals are spiritual teachers. No, because I agree. I agree. they teach us compassion. They teach us reverence. They teach us how to worship this beautiful planet. And I would say, this is the only planet we have, right? So let's take care of it. This, those animals belong to us, and we need to create that sense of belongingness and having the sense of responsibility. It is our responsibility to take action with compassion, non-violence, hainsa, Jesus Christ was a perfect example. The Buddha talked about compassion, Hainsa, which comes from the yoga tradition, which is a very ancient from the Vedic that dates like 5,000 BC. It's a very rich tradition. It's very beautiful. It's non-violence. We need to stop the violence. It is time that we awaken to the truth and the beauty. This is right. the call to we're everyone. We're coming down to the end of the show. So, I mean, I think that's it, you know. It's time for us to awaken to the beauty, the love, the consciousness, the oneness, to have that experience and 
You know, I mean, that's what we're all here to do. That's what the show's about. That's why Vivi does everything she does. So, good night. God bless you. We love you. Thank you. Good night.